Hey guys, welcome to my walkthrough for my mosaic sleigh. Isn't it cute? I think I'm allowed to say that. I mean, I designed it and I think it's cute. I made one in blue too. It's a little bit smaller. Um, the yarn I used was different, but there it is. Let me see, just a little smaller, but that's okay. They're both super cute in my opinion. You don't have to agree with me. Maybe you're gonna skip this section. I don't think you will. I think you guys are gonna like it. This is part of the Facebook group, Mosaic Crochet, Cows, Mouths, and More. They're having a crochet along. That's what Cal stands for. C-A-L, crochet along. Mal, make along. They're kind of the same. Anyway, here we are. We're doing this big group thing. A whole bunch of designers have designed you some pieces for a Christmas crochet along. And mine is a sleigh. And this video, I'm going to show you every single row, every stitch. Some of the stitches, um, like when there's like long sections, I just make it go a little faster. So if you're not familiar with overlay mosaic crochet, let me tell you, it's very easy. All these fringy things, that's because every round you're joining your yarn and at the end you're cutting it. You don't carry bobbins. You don't have to worry about, um, you know, tapestry crochet or anything crazy like that. Overlay mosaic means you're working with one yarn at a time. Mine is white and gold. And you're either doing a dropped double crochet, that's what these stitches are, they drop down, or you're doing a single crochet in the back loop only, which I think is right at the top here. These are all just single crochets. And when you put them in the back loop only, you get these front loops. So that's what next round I could drop down there and fill it up. That's how you get the design. That's it. Just double crochet and single crochet, really. And it's going to be pretty. Now, you'll notice this isn't big enough for a blanket. This is one repeat wide. And in the written pattern, it has little asterisks to tell you that's the design. You're going to repeat that two times, three times, four times. I don't know how big you want to make your blanket. So you'll have sleighs that are like lined up to each other. I mean, they'll be the same color. You won't have to cut your yarn in between, right? You just keep crocheting and you have a row of sleighs. At the end, once you've done as many repeats as you want, so two sleighs, three sleighs, four sleighs, at the end of every single round, you'll have a balancing stitch. The balancing stitch is just a repeat of the very first stitch. So in my case, it's alternating singles and doubles. And that just, um, for a sleigh, it doesn't matter as much, but to make it fit with all the other patterns in this crochet along bundle, uh, sometimes a pattern needs that extra balancing stitch to make it an odd number. So that's it, that's basically it. The pattern is free. You get the free video, you get the free PDF. So go to Ravelry, print your PDF, and you'll have the key and you'll have an explanation. You'll have links to more tutorials. It'll all be good. If you are the kind of person who doesn't download on Ravelry, you can also just view the pattern on my website. I've posted it there and um, you can come view it whenever. It'll be there forever, okay? So get your hook. Let's go. Oh, I was going to mention the yarn. I'm using this yarn. This is a worsted weight yarn and my hook is uh, five millimeters. If you have picked out yarn and you already started a project, maybe this is old news to you, just keep going with the same yarn and hook you're using. Each section doesn't change. If you're using the same yarn, just keep going, right? Follow the stitches, it'll fit. This one here recommends a four to five millimeter hook. It technically says three light. I don't think it's that light. They, they feel quite thick to me. So I would say it's a worsted weight and maybe it's just a very, very thick three. Worsted weight is a four. So that's what it looks like. This one, I think it was a light and that's why it's slightly smaller. That's how you get it. If you need to do a gauge swatch to figure that sort of stuff out, you can do that too. But I think by now you already have a piece and you're just adding this on. So let's get going. Okay, so like I was saying, this white for me is going to be my background color, color B. And this gold is going to be the sleigh, color A. If you have a piece that you're already joining on to, you're gonna start at row one with this color. I don't have a piece here, so I'm going to do a foundation row first with the other color. You can either do chaining and then single crochet back, or you can do a foundation single crochet, which is what I prefer. I'm going to start with the foundation single crochet. Make a slip knot, 
chain two. Then we're going to insert, I use the back bump into the first chain, yarn over, pull it up. We're going to do the chain that counts at the bottom and then the single crochet all at once. And then to make more, you go back into that chain space under two loops now because there's a V at the bottom. Pull up a loop. The first one counts as the chain. The second one going through two counts as the single crochet. So you get the V's at the top like a normal single crochet would have. It's not much to look at with only two stitches, but we'll keep going. And you can just keep making as many as you like. I find it easier then chaining a million and sometimes it's hard to count and then you go back and you single crochet and you realize you had the wrong count. I like that was so frustrating and chains in general can be hard for people to get the right tension. So then this one creates, I mean it takes practice still to make sure that your tension is always even but it's easier in my opinion to get the right tension, to get the right stitch count Plus, you get a tail at the beginning and the end, just like every other row will have. So, just all around better in my opinion. If you don't like it, you can just chain, add one because you'll have a turning chain, and then single crochet back. So, my pattern says you need repeats of 48 plus 3. So, all of the patterns in this crochet along, there's going to be a joining stitch and an end stitch at the beginning and the end. Some designers might call it a different thing, but it's the same thing where you're joining your yarn and cutting it off. And you need to also have a balancing stitch. So we have 48 in the repeating section. But if you were drawing something uh, like a decorative design, often they throw it at the end of the repeats, they throw a balancing stitch in there just to make it all symmetrical. People really like symmetry. You don't notice that issue as much on a design such as mine with the sleigh. But because we're joining it to all the others, we still need to keep that balancing stitch in there because we want to be able to mix and match with all the other pieces, right? So here we are. We only need one more. And I thought I'd make sure we're, we're seeing this is the top, the V, just like a normal. This V at the bottom is where we're going under two loops of the V. And pulling up a loop. Try to keep them even in height. One for the single or the chain at the bottom and then two for the single crochet at the top. And now we have our foundation single crochet. It's stretchy. The top has V's that we'll, we're used to. The bottom also looks nice. And we can cut off our yarn. If you were making more than one repeat, which is likely if you were going to do a blanket, you would want to have, you know, three or four or five or however many repeats you're doing. I'm just showing one repeat for the video. So that's only 48 stitches, which is the repeating section, an end stitch, and a joining stitch, and a balancing stitch. So I've got 51 here. If you wanted to do more, you would add 48. You start with 51 and then you add 48, 48, 48, 48. Row one, if you have a project that you're joining this to, this is where you're going to start with row one. And you're going to join it to either a project or your foundation row if you haven't started anything else. And we're going to do our first joining stitch because I did this, um, the foundation thing. The first stitch is actually the very tiny little knot looking thing here. Yours might not be as hard to find if you have a project that you're already joining it to. Joining stitch goes under two loops like a normal single crochet would and we do a single crochet. That means that all of these stitches on the side are locked in tight, but the in the actual pattern, whenever you see a single crochet, we know that we're doing mosaic, overlay mosaic. So the single crochets are actually going into the back loop. This little V here, normally you'd go in the hole. We're just gonna use one loop, the back. That leaves the front loop available for our dropped double crochets. Now this row, you can count them if you want, if you're not sure about your stitch count, but it's all single crochets. You're just going all the way across. So double check your count if you like, or make it real quick if you want. We're going to go all the way across until we get to the end. 
Okay, I've crocheted all the way across except for our very last stitch, which is an end stitch. So it goes under both loops, just like that joining stitch did at the beginning. We're locking everything in nice and tight, so we want it to be secure at the end. And then we can cut our yarn. That's what we've got, just kind of boring so far, just these foundation rows. Our next one, we are always switching back and forth between each color, color A, color B, color A, color B. We're going back and forth. Now remember this is B because it counts as the background. And now we're gonna cover up all of these stitches with dropped double crochets. So first our stitch for row two, we're using color B, background. And the first stitch goes right under both loops. We're joining the yarn to the project, we're making a single crochet. Then we have the asterisk because it's telling us our repeating section. Very boring repeat right now, easy to count. We're all dropping down. Each stitch that you do with a dropped down double crochet skips that, that stitch behind it. So this stitch now is used because we're using the front loop for the dropped. The next stitch will be used down here and so forth. They all line up. There are other methods also of locking it in. People lock it in at various different points. I prefer not to lock in, although I do have a tutorial on doing that. It changes the tension, it changes the height of the stitch, and it takes more time. Those flaps on the back are just a byproduct of the technique. They're normal, they don't bother me, I don't mind. This is number 48. That's the end of my repeating section. If you have more, you would keep going. Then we need that balancing stitch, which is basically just the first stitch that you did. It's just repeated. And then our end stitch, sorry, I don't know why I'm yarning over, goes under the two loops and does a regular single crochet. So our piece, usually it's gonna have a bit of a twist in it because our tension just is how yarn works. There's a flap at the back. He's, you're just gonna ignore him. Don't worry about him. And we're gonna repeat it again. This one is all just single crochets in the back loop, except for those joining stitches and end stitches. First one goes under two loops. All the other ones go under one loop single crochet. We're going to do 48 in the repeating section plus the balancing stitch. So there'll be 49 in my section. If you have two repeats, you would actually have to do 48 plus 48 and then your balancing stitch. And then our end stitch at the end. I'll meet you there. So we're almost done row three here. Did our 48, our balancing stitch, and then our end stitch under both loops. Now we're getting into some exciting parts. Ooh, we're gonna change up the count. That's so awesome. This is row four. If you ever get lost, you're gonna wanna count your, if you have nothing down here, it will be easier. Otherwise, you should put a stitch marker here so that you know this would be row one. The white is two. This gold again is three. This is gonna be four. So of course we always start with our joining stitch under both loops, single crochet. Then we have five doubles. So we're dropping it down, we're picking up the loop, making sure that everything is lined up. If you have them tilted the wrong way and you grab the wrong loop, then you're gonna mess up your count. And every time you do a dropped double crochet, you're skipping that single crochet behind it. So everything has to keep lining up. Then we have 40 single crochets, so it's a bit of a count, but I know you can do it. So we've done 40 single crochets. If you are at the end and you can count backwards, that's easier to notice that we have an end stitch, our balancing stitch, and then three double crochets. But if you have repeats, you're gonna wanna count all 40 of those stitches.
It can be tricky when you're doing the double crochets. You drop down and sometimes you're not sure which way to lean. It feels a little bit like when you drop down you have to move this way just a smidge sometimes depending on your tension. If you're in doubt don't go backwards that'll be wrong. So hopefully it's straight down but if it's not quite straight down sometimes it leans just a little bit that way. Um, this is our balancing stitch. So this is where the star ends. If you were, had more repeats you'd start down at the beginning again which is actually more of these double crochets. But we are at the end so we just do our balancing stitch which is one double crochet and the end stitch that goes under both loops. Row five, we are using this beautiful gold color for me. You can see how my piece is curling up. If you flatten it all out, you'll see that the white was at the bottom or you'll have more project underneath. Mine, it likes to curl at the very beginning. So maybe the very beginning of your project is curling as well, but flatten it out. Then you'll be able to double check where you are. We're at round five. Odd number colors are using row A. A for the design, B for the background. Mine is white background. So that joining stitch goes under both loops. Then we have five single crochets. It's easy for this one. You can't make a double crochet on top of a double crochet. It has to be single crochets for these ones. One, two, three, four, five. Then we have one double crochet. It lines up here. This is what I was talking about where when you pull things out you might be tempted to use this loop. But if you straighten things out and you realize that this one's covered, when you go straight down slightly this direction, this is the loop we're using. If you go backwards you'll be adding stitches or just making things crooked. So make sure you get the right loop on the front. When the tension is all good and fine you'll notice that it's the right spot. Sometimes when you're holding it, it curls, it feels different. That's just something to pay attention to. So we've got one double, then we've got eight singles. And again, because we're at the beginning, I'm going to remind you, skip that one at the back because you did a double to cover it and we're not adding stitches. The next one is here. So we've skipped one here. Single crochet eight. Two. Then we have one double crochet. This is again another place where either you're going to count those loops at the front or you're going to know when you drop it down that you're doing not using these ones. You're going down to use the front loop. And you did eight single crochets in between which means you'll have eight front loops down here. So if you want to count that's another way to find that spot. And then we're on to 22 single crochets. So again skipping that one behind Going in the next one, 22. Then we have another double crochet, dropping it straight down. And we will have 10 more single crochets before we get to the end of our asterisk. If you're doing more repeats, which it's likely you are because you've probably got a blanket or, I don't know, a shawl? What are you making? A blanket, a shawl, a table runner, a wall hanging? I don't know what you're making. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oops, I need one more. I could have counted from the other side. The, that's where the asterisk ends. Now you'd be going to the beginning again. Mine is at the end, of course, so I just have that balancing stitch, which is another single crochet. And then my end stitch goes under both loops. So using even numbered row, we're on row six, we're using color B for the background. My background is all white. We start, of course, with our joining stitch going under both loops at the beginning. If you're having a hard time finding that, I suggest that you put a stitch marker right now. Put it right under those two loops so that next time you know which one to go into, right? We are going to start with four double crochets. We drop it down. One, 
looks like this. There's another one here right before that other double crochet. So that lets you know we're going to do two single crochets on there. One, two, and then we've got eight double crochets, which is this is going to fill this whole section. I like to grab the loop when I'm working because I tend to pull on it and I don't like it stretching out. That's why I keep getting my finger in the way. I try to move it for the videos so that you can see what I'm doing, but it feels so awkward for my tension. So I'm trying to find a healthy balance of showing and doing. <laughs> Then we just have one single crochet on top of there and we're going to do 22 which fills the whole gap again so you can count if you want to make sure you're not adding or missing stitches if you're confident you don't really need to count just go until you can't go anymore because you can't put a double crochet on a double crochet so you'll go until you reach that one Then we have one single crochet right on top of that double. It's where you can't put a, du a double crochet into there, right? It's already covering up the front loop. So we know it has to be single. And then we're going to finish off with all double crochet. If you want to count, you can, but if you are confident, we'll just do them all across. If you have repeats, um, you might want to separate the repeats with like a stitch marker or something so that you know when to start counting again for the beginning. So that's 10, that's the end of our repeating section. We do one more to balance it off. And the end stitch under both loops at the end. Again, if you're having trouble determining what's the end stitch and what's your final knot, then I suggest a stitch marker, like a safety pin or a bobby pin or an extra piece of string at this point so that you know what to look for. Row seven, starting of course with our joining stitch. We always have to join our yarn and then we have four single crochets, which is easy to remember. We can't do a double crochet on a double crochet. Not two different colors anyway. Then we have one double crochet. You can see that's the beginning of the sleigh, the little curvy part. So the next part's going to be single crochet. We're going to do nine. It gets you to this double crochet over there. So I always say counting is best because even I make mistakes sometimes, but it does help to know those visual cues of where you're going. So that's nine single crochets. The double goes in the only place he can. 22, that means we're going to go all the way across and get to here again. We're just making that sleigh stick. What do you call it? It holds up the sleigh. These would be the skis on the ground and it's holding up the sleigh. I only draw it. I don't know what it's called. Okay, so we've got 21, 22. We're going to have one double in the only place he can be. And then it goes right across the end again. Counting if you want to, it will be 10 single crochets in the repeating section and then a, another balancing one on the final end. You should have the free PDF in front of you, so you don't really need me to count it out loud. It's free, so you might as well have it, right? There's our balancing stitch and the end stitch. I'm not very good at keeping my tails the same length. I always start with too much on the bottom rows just in case I need to pull things apart. Once I'm sure, I make them a little bit shorter. We're on row eight, starting with our joining stitch. Then we have four double crochets.
we're going to do one single, it's right on top of the double, and then we're going back to another double. And then it surprised me the first time I was crocheting this. I was like, why am I putting a single there? But it's because the loop comes back up. So we need that single for later in the project. And then we go back down, putting some snow back down there. So we have four single, double, single. We're going to have two doubles. Then we have 34 singles. So it is important to count, but if you want to pay attention to where I go, that'll help you as well. We're going to do here, make sure you're skipping two at the back. Here we're going to count one, two, three, four, five. Make sure that this one is six. That helps you know that you're doing it right. Keep going. Seven, eight, 27, 28, this will be 29, so if you're double checking that you're in the right spot, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34 single crochets, and then we're going to do a double. So make sure at the bottom here you've skipped one, two, three, four, five white loops. When you do this double that makes sure that you're all lined up and we're going to do five double crochets for the repeating section if you have repeats then you'll start at the beginning at four more double crochets right so you'll have nine in between we are at the end so i'm going to do a balancing stitch which is just a repeat of whatever the first stitch was here so it's a double and then end stitch goes under the v Cut it off. Row, row nine. Joining stitch. Four single crochets. Of course, by now you know they're in the back loop only. All the single crochets going in the back loop. All the double crochets are dropped down two rows below. We are going to do another single and then a double. This tail is getting in my way. Then we have two singles. And then we're going to go double single. And then eight doubles. So make sure when you're finding the loop at the front and the back, we're always, if there's a single up here, you gotta skip that loop. If there's a double here, you've gotta skip that back here. Might be old news. Maybe you're tired of me mentioning it. Eight, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight. Then we're going to put one single crochet. You can count these ones or just make sure that everything is lining up. Then we're going to put seven more doubles. Double one, double two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we'll have one single. These random single crochets are preparing for the decoration. If you looked at the picture, there's some sparkly snowflakey type things. We're going to do five more double crochets. Three, four, five. So we did five double crochets. Now we need to do one single crochet. 
and six doubles. Then we're going to have one single crochet again. One double. You'll see that it looks like there's an extra stitch here. We've done the single here, double here, this one. That's like the, the base of the sleigh sticking out. It's supposed to be there. <laughs> you didn't make a mistake. Don't worry. Now we have six single crochets to finish off the repeating section. Three, four, five, six. We'll add our one more balancing stitch on the outside of those asterisks and our end stitch right under both V's, both sections of the V, however you say that. We're at row 10. Of course, we always start with our joining stitch. Then we're going to have four doubles. Mm Three single crochets, that makes the front part of the sleigh the twirly ski. And a double crochet on the other side of it. You know what I mean? The twirly part of the ski? I don't know. <laughs> then we're going to have 19 across. So there's a bump that comes out here. Two. Three. 18 and 19. So if you're looking for visual cues, these little dots are skipped. They're just dots in the decorations. This one, on the other hand, has a line that's going to join down one double crochet here. And then we're going to do 14 single crochets again. One, two, 13 and 14. So that gets us right to the end of the sleigh. We're going to do a double crochet here. We're going to do six of them, but it starts right here is what I was trying to point out. Two, three, four, five, six. And the end or the balancing stitch before we do our end stitch. Row 11, did our joining stitch. Now we're going to do eight single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then we'll have seven double crochets. So it goes right beside there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're going to put one single crochet. And then five doubles. This is what it looks like so far. Now we're going to do another single crochet and three doubles. Five single crochets. If you're paying attention to this, this would be three 
two, one, and two, one on the other side. So that's how you know five is going to be right in the middle of that. One, two, three, four, five. Then we're going to have two double crochets. If you're looking for the cue, this one here, the front loop, then there's one missing and another one before you do this. And we're doing two of them. Then we're going to do one single crochet and three doubles. Then we have one single crochet here, five doubles, and that gets you to the end of the sleigh. To finish things off, we have six single crochets and then our balancing stitch, the end stitch. Of course, we're going to start with our uh, joining stitch. Then we have seven double crochet. Of course, we always, for overlay mosaic, double crochet means a dropped front loop double crochet, two rows below. That's too many instructions to put, so we just shorten it. You have to read the key, right? <laughs> And if you're trying to look for a visual cue, again, we're stepping out by one stitch. We're going to do 20 single crochets. That gets us to this little plus sign, just like a snowflakey sparkle type thing. We'll do one drop double crochet there. Then we're going to do four single crochets, which gets us to the next little dot. We'll do one drop double crochet here. Then three single crochets that gets us to our next dot. So we skipped some back here, but that's just decoration dots. <laughs> and now we're going to do another double crochet here. Five single crochets gets us to the end of the sleigh. Six double crochets is the final outside of the sleigh, the background snow or sky or whatever you're trying to think of it as. And of course, once I do my six, I have to add one for the balancing stitch. If you have repeats, you have to do six and then seven more to get to the front of your next sleigh. End stitch right like that. Row 13, odd numbered row, uses our color A for the design, the sleigh. Joining stitch. Then we have, oh, better move my little mouse, seven single crochets. It's going to join to the other brown. Then we're going to do three doubles. Do one single crochet. Back to doubles. We're going to do two more. One. 
and 2. Now this is the first time that if you've got the written instructions in front of you, you see brackets and you might panic if you've never come across that in a pattern before. Don't panic, it'll be okay. We're going to say the beginning of the bracket, follow the instructions until you get to the end, then it tells you how many times to do what's in the bracket. So we go from the beginning, single crochet 1, double crochet 4, and then we start over and do single crochet 1, double crochet 4. We only do it twice. Brackets on some of my patterns can be more complicated, but this one's not too hard. Now we're going to go to the beginning of the bracket again. It said single crochet one, double crochet four. That's how we manage that. So this is what we locked so far. Now we're going to do another single crochet. And then we'll have three doubles. That'll get us to this plus sign or sparkle. It looks like a plus sign, but it's a sparkle. Single crochet right at the top here. You can't do a double crochet on top of the other double crochet anyway. Then we'll have two more on the other side. Three single crochets gets us to this. It's making like a an arrow type thing. Then we have double single double. And we're making another arrow type thing on the other side facing the other direction. So we have three singles. Then we're back to doubles. It's just to the end of the sleigh. And then singles, six across, plus our balancing and the end stitch. Round 14, not round, row 14. Joining with joining stitch, double crochet six, for a visual cue we're stepping out again, one step out. We're going to do four single crochets. And the double crochet is going into that little spot that we had prepared earlier. Then we have 23 single crochets. It'll get us way over here. <coughs> 22, 23. So we went all the way across. We're going to go right in the middle here with one double crochet. Then we have seven. Gets us to the end of the sleigh. We'll do the six that is always at the edge. Plus our balancing one, it's really seven. If you're only doing one repeat of the project, it does seem weird to say six plus one all the time, but it's because if you're doing more than one width, you need to know, right? End stitch. Row 15, back to our color A. 
most of my actual patterns I use main color and contrasting color but color A and B works just as good. I'm going to do six single crochets. Then we have two doubles. Five singles, we're making a bigger plus sign again. Well, sort of. It's not that big, but it's not that small. You can't really make it any smaller, actually. <laughs> not on a chart like this. Then we have three doubles. So that one's right above that. One, two, three. Then we're going to have two singles. Another double. So these are just decoration dots. Five singles. One, two, three, four, five. We have a double and then a single. Then three more doubles. Two, three, one single, two doubles. Then we're going to have five singles again. If this one's in the middle, that's number three. It's a good place to double check that your everything is lined up. Five singles. Now we're going to do five doubles. It gets us to the end of the sleigh. And six singles. That's the end of the repeat. We do our balancing single and the end stitch. We're on row 16. Starting with our joining stitch. Then we have six doubles. Gets us to the beginning of the sleigh. The front wall. <laughs> I don't know what you call that. We're going to do four singles and then line this one up. So the double crochet is there. Then we have five singles. It gets us to this gap here. One in here, two here, then the next three are all on top of the double crochets. In this gap we'll put two double crochets. Then we have one single and then we've got five double crochet. So these are, I think this is the beginning of the present in the sleigh. Could look at my other one. Oh yes, it's definitely the present in the sleigh. I have a couple samples lying around here. I glance at it every now and then to make sure I know what I'm doing. <laughs> 
Then we're going to do single and a double in that little spot again that's been prepared. Then we'll have eight singles, so we're skipping this little dot. He doesn't get anything to come join him, he's just a dot. This double crochet is lining up to make the plus sign. Then seven gets you to the end. And six double crochet plus the balancing and the end stitch. Row 17. My birthday's on the 17th, so that's my favorite number. Joining stitch. I guess my tail got a bit long. See, I'm not very good at keeping them the same. They're ish. They're same ish. We're going to do six single crochets. It gets us to the sleigh. Four doubles gets us to that plus sign. A single crochet on the top of the plus sign because you can't do a double in the way. Then we're going to do four doubles. There's five here, so don't do it that one if that helps you. I don't know if that kind of thing helps you. You could just count if you don't want to look. <laughs> That's usually how I do things. I only look for the purposes of the video, but usually I just count. Completely ignore what I'm crocheting. Just count. We're going to do three singles. The drop double is going to go in there. Now we have five single crochets. One double and two singles. Three doubles and then three singles. We're going to go double, single, double, just around here. Then we're going to have three singles and three doubles. The three doubles get you to the end of the sleigh. Six singles across here plus our end balancing one, which is actually seven for me. It's important to know that six because if you're repeating it, you'll do six singles here at the beginning and then you'll do another six singles to do the beginning again. Did I say the beginning twice? Six singles at the end of it, six at the beginning. Goodness gracious, hey? End stitch goes right under both. Where are my little scissors today? We're now on row 18. Starting, of course, our joining stitch, which goes right next to the knot under the two loops. Sorry, two V's, the V? Yeah. We're going to do six doubles. That gets us to this sleigh again.
Then we have nine single crochets. We're going to put three doubles here. That's uh, one of our presents. Oops, I did weird. We have one single crochet on the line between the two presents. And then we do five doubles again because that's the next present in the sleigh. One single crochet, two doubles. There's a space for two. We'll fill it right up. This here, you can see it made a little arrow. We're making another one here. So we'll do five singles and then a double right to close. So we put one double here. So we've got one double here. Then we'll put three singles across, putting another double on the other side. Then we have five more singles to get to the end of the sleigh. and six plus our balancing doubles. This is my balancing one. And end stitch under like normal. We are now on row 19. We're definitely moving right along slip knot, joining stitch, always, always, always. Then we're going to do seven single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's going to go in one before we do our drop double crochet, just to give you a reference point. Then we have six doubles, so remember to line everything up. And there will be two stitches, two gold stitches that you're not using. So you said one here that we didn't use, two on this side, that's where the six belongs. We are going to use this one, just that's when you finish this six, that's how we are. We're going to do one single and then a double. Then we have three singles and we'll drop down in here. five singles and then we'll drop down again. This time we're going to do three singles. So there's two that we can't do a double on and we have to go one more before we do our dropped. We'll be doing four doubles, which gets us to this white line here. One single, three doubles right in between there, fill it up.
Then we have brackets again. They're not hard. You just start at the beginning and follow it. It says one single crochet, two doubles, and then that's the end of the bracket and it says times two so we just start again. One single crochet and two doubles. We'll have our six single crochets here plus the balancing stitch then our end stitch. We're at round 20. We're going to start with our joining stitch of course and then we're only doing three double crochets. So we've been doing quite a lot more but now we're going to make space for the little curl that goes at the top of the sleigh. And then we have three singles. The double crochet goes right as far as he can. You can't put double crochets here, so. Then we're going to do six single crochets, then drop down here. Then we have one single crochet and we're filling this up again with three doubles. Then we have seven single crochets. So this little box, he's finished. And then three, filling up this gap here, three double crochets, dropped double crochets. I don't say dropped every time. And 14 singles, that'll get us right to the end and we'll do our six doubles, our balancing double and the end stitch. So here we are at the end of the sleigh, so now it's time to do the drop double crochets. Six is in the repeat, which is important to know because if your project is wider than mine, you'll be repeating again, but I'm going to do six plus that balancing double crochet. And the end stitch right there. We're going to do round 21, not round, row, round rows. Joining stitch, then three singles. Then we have double, single, double. two singles so that sleigh is kind of curving back in on itself. One double, one single, and two doubles. And I'll show you what it looks like so we can get our points of reference. So you can see that we got to that place that we had prepared, left a gap in the middle, the sleigh is curving in back on itself, but then there's something in the middle here. And here, this little line, it'll bend. I think it's the sleigh going up again, if I remember correctly. So we're going to do two singles now. One double. And then five singles. Oops. Then five single crochets. This double crochet that we're dropping down here, 
we've made the side of the box this box is done this box was hiding behind it and then we have to do seven single crochets that'll get us to here double single and then 12 doubles that'll get us to the end of the sleigh again make sure you're skipping that one everything's lining up right way Then we have six singles and the balancing stitch, which is of course another single. The balancing stitch is really just the same stitch as this row, number one column, if you were looking at the chart. It also is just a repeat of the very last here, but that's not necessarily always the case with all designs. So just in case you wanna know how to add a balancing stitch later to something else, I don't know. <laughs> We're going to be doing row 22, joining stitch. We're going to do three double crochets, and then we hit the spot where we can't do a double crochet. We're going to go single, double, single, basically if we can do a double, we are. If we can't do a double, we're doing a single. And then we're going to put two doubles in between here. One, two. Then we've got four singles. So that's just a decoration dot. He's not being used for anything, just to make polka dots all over the place. Decorative sparkles, if you have a good enough imagination. Then we have two double crochets. Seven single crochets, that'll finish this little present. Then we're gonna fill in this present seven times, seven double crochets. Single, double, single 12 to get to the end of the sleigh. And just like every other row we've done, six doubles and the balancing double before we do our end stitch. Then our end stitch goes right under both loops and cut it off. We're on row 23 using this color A, which is the design. Joining stitch, three single crochets. Then we'll have one double and this little curly loop he is done. So we're going to do four singles across. We're going to put three doubles now, which doesn't go to the end. It only goes to here.
four singles, so one on each side. There's two in the middle, one extra on each side. One double crochet. Three singles, one, two, three. One double crochet. Okay, I panicked. I thought, oh no, I did a mistake. It's not lined up. But that's because there is lots of presents here. So there's one box here, one box hiding, another box hiding. So he gets a corner into him and then another box. So it's not supposed to line up. It's the box corners. We're going to do eight single crochets now. One double crochet, two singles, three doubles, so we have this brackets again, three doubles, one single, three doubles one single, and then there'll be three doubles again. They don't fit in the brackets though, because after that it's six singles. Six and the balancing, of course. Single crochet because that's the only option you have when there are already doubles in the way. Row 24, using our, for me is white, but for you could be something else. This is color B for background. Three double crochets to get us started here. That little tail wants to be stuck. I don't want him to be stuck. I mean, I could, but that's not what I'm doing today. Then we have three single crochets. One, two, three. One double. And four single crochets. So things are leaning different directions again. If you were thinking of the sleigh, stitches aren't leaning, just the sleigh. And then we have four doubles and I'll show you here what it looks like. This one's he's come in and now he's going back out. So we've got to fill this gap here with four doubles. Oops. One single crochet. Then three doubles, so it goes as far as it can. One single crochet and eight doubles. Again, it's just filling it up all the way to the side. That present's going to be full. What do you think your present's full of? Because mine is definitely yarn. All four of these boxes, they're just all yarn. That's my presents. If the kids were lucky, maybe there'd be some presents for them too. <laughs> no, they're all mine. <laughs> it's all just yarn. We uh, are going to put one single and then fill up this gap with two doubles. Then we have seven singles, so we're going to skip that little dot and go to the next one. Fill that dot with one double. Three singles gets you to the end of the sleigh. 
And then just like every other round row, we're going to do six doubles and our balancing double and then our end stitch. Row 25, we're back to using gold, brown, whatever color you're using. Joining stitch. Then we'll have four singles. So we're going to skip these three plus this one. And by skip isn't really the right word. You know what I mean? We are not doing dropped double crochets. Obviously here you can't, but here we are not doing a drop double crochet. We are going to do it here, two of them to fill in that little curly loopy, whatever you want to call it. Does it have a word? The front of a sleigh? Have you ever seen a real sleigh? I live in Canada. We're full of snow like all the time and I've never seen a sleigh that looks like this. Not in real life, only on the cool movies. We're going to do one single crochet and then we're going to put three doubles. So one, two, three, which means this one's not going to be a double. Then we're going to do five singles. So this one will be one, two, three, four, five. And we'll line it up here again. This double crochet is on the line that's making the present. Then three singles inside the present. Another line for the present wall, box wall eight singles all the way across to the other wall of the present. There's so many presents in here there was no room for Santa so that must be a lot of yarn. Dropping our double crochet to make that wall or the edge of the present the line. Then we'll have three singles, so this one, this one, and an other one, making this sleigh lean. The sleigh isn't leaning, the entrance of the sleigh, is this how you would climb in? Then we have four doubles. And five singles, so two with the line and two on the other side. We're just putting one double crochet, that's the edge of the sleigh. And we're doing those same that we always do, six single crochets plus the balancing single crochet before we get to our end stitch. Row 26 with our white. We're getting near the top of the sleigh. It's getting exciting. The end is nigh. <laughs> That's a weird way to say things, but yep. Yeah. Joining stitch. Four doubles, which gets us to the next spot that can no longer be a double. Then we'll have six single crochets. That'll get us to this edge of the sleigh curvy thing. We're going to put five double crochets in this little gap before we get to the end of present again. One single crochet, that's the wall of the present, then fill it three doubles. Then we're going to do ten single crochets, so that'll make the top line of that final present up there. Well, I guess he's not the final present, but he's the big one.
Three double crochets will fill the gap. Then we have six singles and a double will drop right here to line up with that. Three singles gets us to the end of the sleigh and just like every other row we're going to fill the gap before the end with six doubles then another double for the balancing stitch and our end stitch. Row 27, we are odd numbered row, so we're using color A, which is our sleigh, our design joining stitch. Then we'll start with five singles. So this one you could have done a double, we're not dropping down, we're going to cover it with a single. Then we'll have four doubles, one, two, three, four, which means this one at the end, he won't get used either because everything is curving. Then we have six singles that'll get us to the present. One dropped double crochet for the box wall. And then across here we can do five. So that's because the box was hiding behind the corner. Now you're going to make the box a little bit more visible. So that double crochet. You'll see one loop here and one loop here that you didn't use. And then across we have 11 single crochets. This is 10. There could be a double, but we're going to put that 11th single crochet there because this is leaning. We're going to do five double crochets. So you're just skipping that front loop and using the next one. Two, three, four, five. You can't put any more because this one's in the way. We're going to put a single on top of him. Then we'll have just only two double crochets on this side because now the back end of the sleigh is also being swooshed. <laughs> so we're changing our number. It used to be six. Now we'll have seven single crochets plus the balancing stitch before we do the end stitch. Row 28, here we are. Joining stitch. And we'll get started with five double crochets. That'll take you to this line. Four single crochets goes right on the top of those. Six doubles, one, two, three, four, five, six, right to the edge of that 
box. Then we'll have seven single crochets. So the top line of the box is now being shown instead of hiding everything. We're going to drop our double crochets 11 times here. That gets us right as far as we could go. Now we're going to do eight single crochets, which covers the top of the sleigh, and we'll do our seven doubles on the other wall, winter wall, snow wall. Where we can do a double crochet, we are on the outside of this sleigh. This little tail really wants to be in there. It's like a little magnet or something trying to sneak his way under. No, you don't get to go under. That is one method. One method of covering up your tails is to crochet over them, but I'm not a fan of it, so I would like those tails to stay out. I will put an envelope border when I'm done. And our end stitch goes under the loops there, locking everything in place. Row 29. Ooh, we're getting so close to the end. Starting with our joining stitch, of course. And we can't do double crochets on top of double crochets, so we will be doing singles. However, it is 34 single crochets, okay? So 34, we're gonna, of course you can't do double crochets on all of these spots. This one here, we're also, it's still leaning in. So the next double crochet is gonna be right here. Okay, so we got all the way across. We're going to put two double crochets. We're skipping that one and we're going to do them here. Two double crochets, one single. Then three double crochets. That means that this little edge is coming up. One more stitch. We're going to add another one here. Eight single crochets plus the balancing single crochet again before we do our end stitch. We have a final row of white to define that edge. So we're going to be attaching and doing 34, which gets us right to that edge where you can put a double crochet, you're going to fill it right up. Okay, so we filled all that up, 34 double crochets. Now we're going to have six singles, which goes right across the top of the sleigh, and then eight double crochets on the other side of the sleigh.
And that is the entire pattern. That's the end. Now, some of you, because I know that some of you are very crafty and very clever, if you think that the top of the sleigh is too close to the next design, you are well within your right to add another row of white. I mean, you would, I would probably do another row of the gold and then another row of white covering it up just so everything looks the same and the texture doesn't change. If you think it's too close to the top, you can add more white. But that is the entire thing. My bottom is still curling. I will block that out or add an envelope border and it'll probably fix it right up. That is the whole pattern. That's our sleigh. The back, if you are looking very carefully, it gets kind of an illusion where the stitches have changed, right? Double crochets and single crochets. But it's actually just all stripes. And these flaps aren't enough for me to worry about, so I leave them. My tension, you can see that it is slightly leaning in. Blocking will help that, an envelope border will help that. I'm not too concerned at this point. It's not severe. That's our piece. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe my channel. 